welcome back. This is ADB Brawler once again for Empire Arcadia, and we're uh, just going over another Splat Zone battle that I had. Uh, now, you will notice that my videos are a bit out of order in the way that I'm posting them. Uh, I'm just coming to them as I see them. Uh, like this one in particular, I want to put this one up before I did anything else because I feel like this is a perfect example of what a team should look like in Splat Zone. Like, I've had a couple of battles that show what a team should look like in Turf War. In Splat Zone, uh, teams are completely different. Like, as you can see in this battle, um, Splat Zone, it took me a while to figure it out, but basically what you want to do is you want to play it just like Turf War, but you're covering this one place. Like, again, I know it plays defensive, I'm going to make corners, you have my bubble shield up. You want to, once you get the color, once you get the zone in your color, you want to stay completely out of it. If you're smart, you will stay completely out of that Splat Zone. It's called the Splat Zone for a reason. You get in there, they will splat you, you will die. So you want to just color it your color and get out as soon as you can. Now, depending on what type of weapon you have, you may have to temporarily run in to color it and then jump back out. But you definitely don't want to stay in the Splat Zone because they're going to call down Ink Strikes. They're going to be throwing Seekers in there. They're going to they're gonna be trying to roll in there with Splat Rollers like they're Iron Man. Which is kind of pointless against me as you see in this battle. Splat Rollers, yeah. They're not as overpowered as they think they are. You'll see a lot of, <laughs> of why I'm saying that in this battle. Uh, like, even here, I just took out one of the Splat Rollers like this. The team, it, it also, it even tells you in the tips when you first start, uh, when you first start a ranked battle, you can hit the X button before the battle starts with the rules for how Splat Zone works. And they even give you a, a tip right there telling you that if you die, wait for your team to reach you. Don't run in and try to be a hero. A one-man show is not going to win in Splat Zone. And I sometimes do group with teams that have a lot of one-man shows that go their own way. Uh, you can see by this one that you can see by this one that everyone is sticking together. And if you can see the gamepad on here, you can see how everyone is actually sticking together. Like, but even when I've been able to see the gamepad, you see uh, you see me running around attacking these uh, two purple engines. I can't see their name anyway. the way. But for the most part, we, we had a buddy system going on for the most part. Whenever you see me, you would see another one. Of them. Like, I cannot pronounce the name because I, I can't, I do top of my head, remember what those uh, kanji symbols mean. Uh, but there's like a, one of the Japanese players, he was right next to me almost all game. I'm like, good, I have a partner with me. And then my other partner who's covering the other splat zone has a partner who's always with him. You want to at least try to keep, when there's more than one splat zone, you want to try to keep at least two people uh, to a zone. You want to keep a group going on. And if you have if you have the ink strike, you want to call the ink strike to clean up uh, to clean up the zone anytime you can. Once it starts getting covered by too much. But if you're doing like me and you're playing with the uh, Clutter Shot Junior, you have the Bubble Shield. You want to take advantage of that as much as you can. Right? If you do have to jump into this flat zone, which you can see uh, one of the most dangerous places, die. you'll notice most times when I get killed is actually inside the box, inside the flat zone box. Um, if you have to jump inside that uh, the zone for any reason, you might want to have the bubble shell on just to protect it. But you definitely want to attack from the outside. So sniper rifles are actually pretty good for a splat zone as well. I don't know how to use the sniper rifles too well. I never really was good with sniper rifles on any form of a shooter. Even the ones on Kid Icarus Uprising, I just never was too uh, good with sniper rifles. I was always big on the machine gun type weapon. It's probably why the Splatter Shot naturally is one of my favorites. Splatter Shot uh, Junior's here. It's different. Uh, the Killer Well they're using there. Again, it's all about choosing the right weapon in Splat Zone too. Like, you can have the perfect strategy, but the wrong weapon. I've done that several times. Like, if your super weapon is the killer whale, you don't want to use that on Splat Zone because all it's going to do is throw out a sound wave that blows up your opponent. It does not paint the ground, it doesn't do anything to help with the Splat Zone, it just kills the opponent. So what happens if you use killer whale and you miss everybody? Exactly. Nothing happens. You just miss everybody, it does your team no good. You don't want to use the killer whale in Splat Zone. 
I say the recommended super weapons, you want to have the Ink Zooka, the Bubble Shield, or the Ink Strike. And teamwork, 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 teamwork. So until next time, this is AW Brawler for Empire Arcadia saying, be you, be true, be human. AW Brawler, out.